Hi friends, my name is Susan Vaughn Shoemake. Welcome to My Beautiful Believer and welcome to session 17 of this new ministry video teaching session, session series. And today's session title is called Believing the Beautiful. And uh, thank you for joining me. For those of you who haven't known me, I do ministry and counseling. I do healing prayer ministry. I do counseling in churches. I do counseling um, in communities wherever um, there is brokenness. Um, I um, am available to minister God's healing word, God's healing heart, and pray for the sick that, that they might recover. I have a testimony, a miraculous testimony that I'm sharing with you while I am teaching this video series and I'm sharing my heart and um, and heaven's heart, heaven's healing heart and the process of being brought broken to be healed physically, emotionally and spiritually. And God taught me, he brought me to my brokenness to bring me through my brokenness and so this is what I am teaching in this new video teaching series with this new um, with this new ministry message is sharing my testimony of being broken to be healed from brokenness to beautiful and th today is um, believing the brokenness and so if you haven't seen any of the videos you can go to mybeautifulbeliever.com, my website, and watch and see my healing testimony and about my silhouette of suffering. That's about my journey. And talks also about the counseling that I do. And on the page, Beautiful Believer, it has every, all of the videos so far through the, through the series. And so everything is posted there and this is my first time around teaching this so it's a new ministry message and i'm writing it as i'm going so it may be different next season or um it may be edited differently anyway i I'm, I'm um i'm i'm sharing with you uh things as the holy spirit puts on my heart to share these things with you and so this is new to you and new to me and new to you, but I pray that it ministers healing to the broken heart, to the broken body, and to the spiritually broken body of Christ. Oh, and also, I am doing counseling, so there's a counseling package if you're on my website. Go ahead and look at my, see my services, um, and shop my services, and it talks all about the counseling that I do, the life coaching, and there's a package um, of, of one coaching call in three sessions for 50 bucks. So that's, um, that's a deal. So I've got a sale going on and to reach, to reach out to you during this season of suffering this coronavirus and those of you who are battling cancer or other disease, I, um, I'm available for ministry. So yeah, let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your heart, to share your healing heart in the path that you brought me through in the word of God, um, your path of life for every beautiful believer living broken. And so I thank you, God, for today, today's message. I thank you, Lord, for for um, the truth that is gonna be revealed. And I pray, Father, that, that uh, we would leave here today empowered by believing the beautiful. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So today is session 17, believing the beautiful. Believing the beautiful, this is what I teach. This is the goal and this is the outcome of this discipleship training video series, My Beautiful Believer video teaching series. To believe the beautiful is heaven's heart for every beautiful believer. This is God's heart for you. 
because when you begin believing the beautiful, you're walking in accordance and in agreement with the will, the way, and the word of God. And Romans 8, 18 through 12 says, is entitled, From Suffering to Glory, but this is exactly what God is doing. And this is, I'm going to say, from brokenness to beautiful. So Romans 8, 18 through 12 say, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I held on to that through my concussion, through my cancer journey, through the abuse, the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which is now revealed in me. The healing heart of heaven, the healing heart, the healing of my heart. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we now, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. The sufferings of the brokenness we have endured in this present time are not to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The glory of God in us. Believing the beautiful and becoming the beautiful. The glory of God revealed in us and through us as we become his beautiful believers. We believe and God reveals himself in his sons and daughters. God reveals himself in us through the manifestation of himself and his glorious presence, his beauty, love, light, and life through healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. We wait expectantly for the sons of God to be revealed. We wait expectantly for the sons of God to be revealed. God is revealing uh, himself to us in creation. Creation itself is being delivered. We are being delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. This is believing the beautiful. I'm gonna, visible versus invisible and temporal versus eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Temporal means for a season, enduring for a while, temporary. We live in this physical world, and we often believe that our physical circumstances are permanent and unchangeable. We see them only from a limited, limited, visible perspective. We see, therefore we believe. We believe the brokenness. We see our situation as constant and unchanging, but the only thing constant in this temporal world is that change will come. The truth is that today, today is not permanent. Where you are today, is not permanent. The test, the trial, the treatment, the temptation you are experiencing today is not permanent. They are for a season, enduring only for a while. They are temporary. When I was in my abusive relationship in that abusive place, I believed it was permanent. 17 and a half years feels pretty permanent. God had to change my thinking first in order for me to be able to walk into his freedom. God had to change what I believed about myself, what I believed about my circumstances, and what I believed about him in order for me to be free, 
In order for me to be the beautiful, I had to believe the beautiful. God changed my perspective of my spiritual reality in order my, to change my physical one. I'm gonna say that again. God changed my perspective of my spiritual reality in order to change my physical one. I had to believe my circumstances were changeable. I had to believe God would make that change. As soon as my perspective changed and I began to pray differently, my circumstances began to change. This is believing the beautiful. Hebrews 3, uh, Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, Though through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Here's Hebrews, here's the same scripture, that's King James. Here's the same scripture in the Amplified Version. Hebrews 11, 3. By faith, that is with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power of God. We got, we got Kingston, we got a, we got a war going on. That's not good. Uh, please pray. <clears throat> Kingston, no. <sighs> pray. <laughs> this is what happens all the time. Every time I go to do a video, there's something that happens, a ruckus. So pray for peace in my house and for no pet wars going on during this so that I can get through this message and you can <laughs> hear this, please. <laughs> okay, by faith, all right? That is with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the world's universe ages were framed and created, formed, put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. We talk about the power of prayer. If God, who is invisible, created everything that is visible, then it makes perfect sense for us to petition him in the invisible world for every matter pertaining to the visible world. In the Bible, we see that prayer precipitates every major change and move of God in the lives of believers. Why is it then that we as believers won't pray as we should? Satan wants the children of God to believe that their prayers are fruit, fruitful, fruit, futile, and fruitless. He knows that if he can get us to believe the wrong thing about prayer, or that God won't answer your prayers, that you won't pray. And ultimately, you will not see the change in your circumstances you desire. This is why so many of the broken body of believers are frustrated with God over their circumstances in, or their lives and are living broken. They are believing the brokenness and they do not know how to change it. The devil is a liar. He, and he tries to convince us that reality is limited to what we can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. But our minds, but when our minds have been transformed by the Spirit of God, we know that our truest reality is not the chair we sit in or the food we eat, but is in the God who created everything. That's why we pray to him who is invisible instead of trusting in the things we can see that are temporal or in ourselves we are eternal with an eternal nature living in this temporal world as his beautiful believers we should be continually conforming to the image and nature of jesus this is our sanctification we accomplish this by renewing our minds with the washing of the water by the word and by believing the beautiful Ephesians 5, 26 is that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. A renewed mind 
allows us to see things differently from a spiritual perspective, as well as gives us a greater consciousness of God's power and of God's will for our circumstances. Unless we are constantly renewing our minds in the Word of God, discovering who we really are, and developing our spiritual selves through prayer, believing the beautiful, we will fall back into our old ways of thinking, which led us into sickness and disease. When we pray and meditate on the Word of God, we are building the beautiful, our inner, our inner being, and bringing about change in our life that the Word of God promises us. We are believing the beautiful. When you talk about the power of agreement, Matthew 18, 19 says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. The Greek word for agreement is in this scripture is symphoneo, where we get the English word symphony. To agree with someone in prayer is to come into a accordance and harmony with that person regarding that which you are praying about. God is moved by agreement. Every time we come together in faith with another person to agree to see the same outcome to our prayer, it releases supernatural synergy, which in turn produces exponential results. Everything is multiplied. This is why Satan is working so hard to keep the church divided, to keep the church empty, to keep the church not meeting the beautiful blood and to keep the beautiful body of believers living broken and to keep families living broken. The moment we begin to agree with one another in prayer, change happens. If agreeing with our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ yields such powerful results. How much more powerful are the results when we come into agreement with, with the Word of God, right? So when we come into agreement with the Word of God in prayer, the Bible says that if two people shall agree on earth concerning anything, then they will have whatever they ask for. Think of what this means. When we agree with the Word of God. In prayer, we are coming into agreement with the Holy Spirit. We are agreeing with God, and we will automatically, quickly, uh, automatically qualify for answered prayer. God is moved by agreement. God is moved by every beautiful believer believing the beautiful. Once we agree with God, we give His presence power, promises, and per permission to dominate our lives. I'm going to say that again. Once we agree with God, we give his presence, power, and promises, permission to dominate our lives. When we refuse to agree with God and instead believe the brokenness, we agree with the lies of the enemy, lies that say positive change is not possible, lies that say you will never defeat this disease. Lies that say, "I what I do today doesn't make a difference. We give the enemy the power in that situation. Whatever we agree with becomes the governing force, becomes the, the governing force of our existence. Whatever we believe, we become. Whatever we believe, we believe the brokenness or we believe the beautiful. Our agreement determines our expectation, and our expectation determines our manifestation. I'm going to say that again. Our agreement determines our expectation, and our expectation determines our manifestation. Whatever we come into agreement with will ultimately manifest in our lives because there is a cause and effect connection because what we agree with and the changes we will see manifest. We must determine to agree only with God 
We must determine to consciously identify any lies we have been listening to and believing as the truth instead of the truth of God's word. We must see the lies of brokenness we have believed and we must determine to disown them. What lies have you believed concerning your circumstances? What lies have you believed concerning your symptoms? Does the power of your visible symptoms or circumstances overpower the power of your invisible God? Or does the power of your invisible God overpower the powerful visible, the power of your visible symptoms or circumstances? To believe the beautiful, we must fall out of agreement with the lies of the enemy and come into agreement with the word of God. This is how we refuse evil and choose life. We can believe that our circumstances are the problem, or we can believe that what we believe, if God can, if God can change our perspective of a circumstance, creating faith in our hearts for us to overcome them, then he can change every area of our lives. Wherever we have been in bondage, there can be freedom. Wherever we have been in bondage, there can be freedom. All we have to do is agree with God. We simply come into agreement with the word of God and believe him. We believe, we believe God. We acknowledge that God's plans are greater than the devil's plans and we consciously decide. We choose to believe, to walk out God's plan and provision and promises through prayer, faith, and obedience. First John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm going to teach about the power of proclamation. Praying the word of God activates the power of God. Every time we speak God's word, every time we speak God's word, we are agreeing with God and releasing his power. This is what Jesus did when he was being tempted in the wilderness. Every time Satan tempted Jesus, he spoke the word. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He spoke the written word of God to the enemy. He spoke the word of God in every temptation. He spoke the word of God and the power of God was released to defeat the enemy. He didn't just think it, which he had the power to do, but he declared it. Jesus declared it. He spoke it. I want you to hear something, friends. We are speaking spiritual beings with the ability to create or destroy with our words. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a speaking spirit. Therefore, mankind has inherited a speaking spirit. In Genesis 1, 1 through 3, we are told, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and, this, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God is a speaking spirit. God created the physical world through his spoken word. In the same manner, we create our world through the words we speak. Take notice of the words you speak over your life and look at the life you have. What words are you proclaiming? There is power in proclamation. The first assignment that God gave Adam was to name the animals in Genesis 2, 19 says, out of and out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever he called, Adam called every li living creature. That was its name, the name thereof. The word called 
is in Hebrew is kara, which means to utter a sound, a loud sound, or to proclaim. Whatever Adam proclaimed in the earth was established in the earth. Adam was establishing the nature, character, and function of every creature in the earth, in the earth, through the spoken word. This is the power of proclamation. We can't live a life of power and victory in silence. We need the power of proclamation. A life of power and victory demands spoken words. Jesus, just as Adam did in the Garden of Eden, we can name, we can name the situations and circumstances in our lives. We can speak the word of God into our circumstances. We can speak life and not death over our physical bodies. We must speak. We must open our mouths and proclaim the word of God over our lives, over our children's lives, over our finances, over our health, over our surgeries, and over our treatments, and over our work, the work of our hands. We must speak to our enemy like Jesus in the name of Jesus. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit that, that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I, that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. There are times when we should ask God to show us his will concerning a specific situation, but there are also times when we don't need to ask God and what his will is. We simply need to proclaim or speak his word in faith with boldness we simply need to proclaim and speak his word with boldness this means we are proclaiming faith-filled words that we speak from our hearts luke 6 45 says this of the abundance of the heart inner being his a person's mouth speaketh when our faith connects with the words spoken from our heart it becomes a formula for manifestation. I'm going to say that again. When our, when our faith connects with the words spoken from our heart, it becomes a formula for manifestation. Luke 6, 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the substance of a heart, his mouth speaketh. It is easy to become distracted by what we see in this temporal world. It is easy to believe the brokenness. We are surrounded by a disease. We fight a life and death battle each day. We are surrounded by fear, doubt, unbelief, death, and despair. We hear others speak of death every day and of those who have lost their battle to cancer. We hear of those who have lost this battle to coronavirus. Even this week, it was spoken on the news of a new count of 600,000 deaths in the United States of America from coronavirus. But we know who our true enemy is, and we know how to win the war with the word. We must wake up every morning and get with God and make a conscious decision to transcend the negative atmosphere around us. We don't have to adopt the multitude and attitude of the rest of the world. Believe the beautiful, believe God, believe in the power of prayer, believe in the power of agreement, believe in the power of proclamation, believe in the power of expectation, we won't adopt the attitude of the rest of the world. I won't adopt the attitude of the rest of the world. I was healed with a miracle and I won't listen to the lies of those who don't believe. There are those who say that, that the symptoms will come because I have a genetic disease, Huntington's, that I've been, to, but God, healed me 
and I overcame the darkness in my life. I defeated darkness in my life, defeating the symptoms, shunning evil, cursing, cursing the disease, cursing the cancer, cursing coronavirus. We can walk in the victory we have in Christ. What mountain is in front of you? We see, we look at the circumstances and it, it seems like it's a mountain in front of us that we can't get over. Look up to the sun, lift, lift your eyes to the God, to the sun who brings light and life. Lift your eyes to the God who created the mountains and can move the mountains. Believe the beautiful. Agree with the word of God. Agree with God. We must declare every morning not to agree with the fear, the doubt, the unbelief, or the despair. I will not be defeated by a disease. Say, I will not be defeated by a disease. I will not be defeated by a disease. In Jesus' name, today is a day of miracles. Say it today. Today is the day of my miracle. And believe. Today is the day of my miracle. And believe. Mark 11, 22 and 23 says, And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What mountain will you speak to today? Speak to your mountain and believe. Believe in the beautiful. I believe. Believe the beautiful. Father, thank you for my miracle. Thank you, God, that you're, that this is, this is not just supposed to be my testimony, but this is the testimony of every beautiful believer living broken, who believes the beautiful. I pray, God, that you would breathe your life into the brokenness of their minds, of their hearts, and of their physical bodies right now. Breathe your life your promises. We speak the word and you move the mountains. You are the giver of life. You are the giver, the sustaining life and miraculous life. Father, we thank you, God, for the life that you are breathing into the broken right now. Believe the beautiful. Speak to the mountain and tell it to move and believe. Speak to your mountain and believe the beautiful. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thanks for joining me. And um, be, be blessed and healed. In Jesus' name. Believe the beautiful. Uh -uh.